Good morning, and welcome to Unity of Wilmington, your spiritual home. Our celebration singers will welcome us with a song. Please join them. The words are on the screen behind me. Thank you. I woke up this morning with my mind on spirit. I woke up this morning with my mind on spirit. I woke up this morning with my mind. Hallelujah, indeed. Welcome again to Unity of Wilmington. I'm so glad you are here on this September the 10th, the ninth month of the year, amazingly so. I'm Lainey Mauger, I'm your platform host for the day, and I'd like to welcome you again. Anybody here for the first time, can you please raise your hand and we'd be happy to welcome you. <laughs> Yay, welcome to you all. Our ushers will give you an information packet, which you can fill out or not and we'd be happy to talk to you. Anybody here for the second or third time? <laughs> Even better, glad you're here. Please, please keep coming back. And for those of us who do please keep coming back, let's just keep it up because this is a grand place to be on a Sunday morning. I would like to introduce you to the people who will be getting our service through to the day. Christopher Dean is in our sound booth. He has the lights and the sound going. Our celebration singers, you met them earlier. They will be singing again later at the end of the program. Our musicians for the day, Justin, Herb Mitchell, and our music director, Katie Deese. And Bianca Shaw is our soloist, and you'll meet her a little later. Our speaker for the day is going to be Dr. Herbert Harris. And doing our daily word will be Lisa Keating. She will also be over at the prayer box later. So can I ask you to stand and join me in our opening statement? Yes. There is one press active in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotence. And I am a beloved expression of God. I am here for a holy purpose. I am in the right place at the right time right now. And Lisa Keating will now give us our daily word. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Today's daily word uh, for Sunday, September 10th, 2023, is care. I am here and I care. 
Sometimes my heart goes out to a friend or even a stranger who is struggling. Other times, my heart breaks when I learn of another's devastating news. In these moments, I feel the urge to help. I pray, affirming healing, peace, or comfort. I may offer financial support or material goods. I might call on the phone or visit in person. Even so, I may feel my efforts are not enough, especially when needs are great. But the impulse to care is in many people, the activity of God streaming through so many hearts and hands. As I join my efforts with theirs, I trust we can lift up even the most dire situation, affirming that I am a caring presence ready to help, to serve, and love. And the verse is from Thessalonians. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Thank you. And now, Bianca Shaw. I, I, I tell you, I'm going to sing like that. It, it may take me a hundred years and a thousand lessons, but I'm going to sing like that. Let's give Bianca another hand. Thank you. Woo! Make sure I have all my stuff today. Good morning. Good morning. What a great audience. 
My goodness, thank you so much for being here. Let me pull my stand up. This is an amazing day, an amazing Sunday, and thank God that we're all here. One of the things that we love to do is to put ourselves in the vibration of our message and an opportunity to disconnect from everything out there and to connect with the vibrations we have in here. And so we do our meditation this morning. So just sit straight up in your seats, put your feet flat upon the floor, close your outer eyes, and open your inner eyes. And today is a special day for us to breathe, Take a deep breath and hold it. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath and hold it. Let it out slowly. And as you feel the energy around you change, feel this awareness, this light, this coolness, this healing coolness, this joyful coolness that comes down from above and touches the top of our head. This coolness moves down through our eyes. our mouth. This coolness is an awareness of our connection to God, the good, the omnipotent. Just feel that coolness go down through your throat, into your chest. A healing coolness. A coolness that searches throughout your body to bring wholeness, to bring healing, to bring health. Feel that cooling move down through your abdomen, through your hips, through your thighs, through your knees, and down through your feet. And just bask in that coolness. that peace sinks in, I want us to see that thing that we are most enthusiastic about. Our enthusiasm attracts into our life that that we desire. So what is it in your heart that you are most enthusiastic about? What would you like to attract into your life? Mm. Love. Feel that spirit of love. Love from your family, love from your friends, love from people who watch you and never speak, knowing that you are good. Feel that vibration of good health and seek it enthusiastically. I am whole and complete. Let us affirm that today. I am whole and complete. Take a deep breath. Let it out. And see that vision of abundance, whatever abundance means to you. See that vision of abundance that you're enthusiastic about experiencing. No. And in this space of enthusiastic expectation, 
we see the good that comes into our life. I see the good. Let us affirm that together. I see the good. That is broken. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And in this space of relaxation, we are complete. And together we say, and so it is. Yes. Ooh. You know, sometimes we get so much into meditation, we don't want to come back. <laughs> just, just say, woo, I feel great. <laughs> That's a great affirmation. Let's do that together. I feel great together. I feel great. Woo. Yes, yes, yes. Well, welcome. This is, and you know, I'm, if you notice, I'm doing a countdown to the end of the year. So this is the second Sunday of the ninth month. <laughs> okay, because I want all of us focused on the end of this year, because this year is going to be your year for greatness. Lanny, I got it from the, I got it straight from above. <laughs> Email. <laughs> This is my year for greatness. Let's say that together. This is my year for greatness. You know what? This is my year for joy. Let's do that together. This is my year for joy. And folks, we have the power to create the world exactly the way we want it to be. Those of you out there on, in cyberspace, I wish you were here. I know that affirmations come through the internet, but I think it loses a little bit in the translation, but do the best you can with it. I also, before I get into the message, I want to thank, I want to call him my, 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 my boyhood friend, but he's going to get mad because I'm a whole lot older than he is. But it's only because I respect the work that he's done, and this is my guest, Terry Richardson and his beautiful wife. Terry, just you all stand. Yes. We go back all the way to, and I'll just be it truthful, I knew it when he was a little boy. <laughs> okay. So I was along the, along the road a little earlier. You know, we like to look at our lessons as experiences in transformation. And as a, as a speaker and as a teacher and as a minister, I like to use the Bible as a frame of reference. The Bible is the greatest prosperity book, motivational book, educational book ever written. You can read it over and over and every time you see something new. And so I like to take the principles from the Bible and apply them in our daily lives. So today, our topic is enthusiasm is your power tool for success. You know, the difference between a power tool is, is output <laughs> and effectiveness. I was watching across the street from my home, they're uh, remodeling a house. And I was watching and they had the nail gun. And I remember when I was a kid, you had like eight guys with hammers, you know, bam, bam, bam. You remember those days? But they had one guy with a gun, he go, pow, pow, pow. And so a power tool is something that gets the job done much more efficiently and much more effectively than anything else. And so enthusiasm, is your power tool to implement your desires. You know, each week we've been building on a different message, and last week talked about desire. How do you implement your desire? How do you make your desire real? Enthusiasm. If you're not excited about the things you desire, <laughs> there's no puzzle. It probably won't happen. Can you imagine the guy who says, I really want to win? <laughs> And I hate these people, they, these people coming like, I'm very excited tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see it, you got to feel it. And enthusiasm is your way to become magnetic and attract into your life anything you desire. 
but you have to desire something. And so whatever we covered last week when we talked about desire, I said, go home and write down your great desires, the things you want to be, do, and have by the end of this year. And now you've got the power tool to make it happen. Ralph Waldo Emerson, and he was a pretty smart person. <laughs> you know, a lot of times people give quotes, you know, I got a quote from Willie Lee Smith. Well, who's Willie Lee Smith? <laughs> what did he ever do? <laughs> okay. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, enthusiasm is the mother of effort. Without it, nothing great was ever achieved. Enthusiasm is the mother of effort. And without it, nothing great was ever achieved. Gordon Parks, the great photographer, said, enthusiasm is the electricity of life. And so let's look at this thing. This enthusiasm, why is it so, so powerful? I'm going to just get, you know, I could give a definition, but sometimes our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success, on page 110, I think we captured enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is one of your most important assets. It is an infectious state of mind which gets for you the cooperation of other people, attracting them to your way of thinking and acting. When you are enthusiastic about where you're going, people notice it and make way for you. You know, Mitch, when you're playing the drums, you know, you can tell the drummer who's into what he's doing. You know, it, it, a lot of times people misinterpret drumming and thinking it means play loud. <laughs> <laughs> but as I listen to Mitch, you can tell he's a very educated and informed drummer because he can play just in those little spots and you hear it. I was like, yeah, okay. Give Mitch a hand, man. You guys are, yeah. <laughs> According to the dictionary, enthusiasm means to be inspired, possessed by God, intense or eager interest, zeal. It comes from the Greek word entheos, meaning God within. In ancient times, enthusiasm was associated with supernatural inspiration or possession. The supernatural aspect was the result of the infectious nature of enthusiasm and attracting the attention and cooperation of others. So you've seen it. When somebody walks in the room jumping up and down and they're enthusiastic, you find yourself wanting to jump. You don't even know what they're excited about. But it's like, yeah, man, I'm, whatever it is, I'm with it. And so enthusiasm is a form of human magnetism. And we've all talked about the law of attraction. So the law of attraction is like a hammer. <laughs> it, it works. But enthusiasm is like that power tool. It takes desire and puts it into a whole nother level. So enthusiasm is an invisible and powerful force of human magnetism that you can use to attract whatever you desire. You see, that enthusiasm that you radiate, it's, a, it's almost like the applied mastermind principle. You know, the mastermind principle in the Bible says, when two or more are gathered on one accord, I am, and I am is the making power, the power to make things happen. I am among them. So you can get a team, and they get together and start chanting. They'll do things they never could do without that, that force, that power. So enthusiasm gives you the ability to create your world exactly the way you want it. So your assignment today, go home and write down three things that you're enthusiastic about and focus on them. And you will start a vibration that starts to attract them into your life. Hmm. When you see people who are enthusiastic, you make way for them. I mean, it's amazing when one of the things about teaching leadership, they all often teach how to walk into a room. I remember actually teaching that. I was asking a company, Lucent Technologies, I'm putting it out there. <laughs> they asked, they wanted, to, they wanted to create a sense of presence among this new level of executives. The older guys had come through 
you might say, a, a, another level of training. They watched other people, how they did stuff. But the newer people didn't seem to get it. And so things like, how do you walk into a room with authority? How do you shake a hand? How do you present yourself so that you radiate what you're about? So when, they come, when you walk in a room, they might say, well, who's that? My goodness. And that's a, powerful, that's a power tool in the corporate world. How many, and you know, I hate that term. I was in corporate America. It makes it sound like you're an executive. And that means you had a job. But how many of you had a job? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And when you have that job, the way you carry yourself impacts whether you get a raise, Myra. You walk in there, you can even walk in early, but walk in. <laughs> you're 15 minutes early, but nobody's going to notice that. Go, Look at that lazy guy. So this enthusiasm is powerful. It sends out to the world what you're really about. The level of desire that you have <coughs> stimulates the, the power. That's what your enthusiasm has to work with. So you have to want something. You have to have a desire. You have to have a desired outcome. Scripture says, where there's no vision, the people perish. And what does that mean? They don't drop dead, but it just means that they never fulfill their purpose. Because until your vision is clear enough for you to see your purpose, you're always like knocking and trying stuff that does not work. How does enthusiasm operate? I want to give a big picture. If we look at the universe, I was a physicist in college. And I always looked at the universe. I, always, I, I, I was a student of the um, theory of relativity. And you know, I, I just thought that there was something about the universe that fascinated me. But as I became more of a teacher and a more of a philosopher, you realize that there are really only two things in the universe, time and energy. And you know, E equals mc squared, and, and that's a the formula from re relativity, general relativity, special relativity, but it's the formula that expresses that there's a relationship between energy, vibration, and M, mass, manifestation. So whatever you want badly can manifest in your life. We, I think last week we talked about Muhammad Ali and Tyler Perry and how what they wanted, they wanted it so badly that in spite of all odds, they attract it into, your, into their lives. If you think back on your life, I guarantee you that there was some situation where you were, your back was against the wall and where you had to do it, <laughs> where it was now or never. And I guarantee if you're here, so it worked, didn't it? <laughs> and so if we think about this, there's time and there's energy. So all that we do, there are some other fields out there. There's gravitational field. The moment you have mass, you have gravity. There are electromagnetic fields that deal with the different waves. But there are also emotional fields. There are vibrational fields, and that's how enthusiasm works. Enthusiasm works through those emotional fields that connect us all. The, the heart of the, the mastermind principle is that there are some emotional fields. There's a vibration in the air. In the, they always call it the ether. You know, in the old scientific books, the ether was anything they didn't understand. <laughs> it's in the ether. Like, yeah, OK. But the, the, the emotional vibrations are what connect us. Like compassion, when you see another person suffering, nobody has to send you a memo. You just understand it. You just feel it. And so enthusiasm works through these, this, this field of energy. And, and I'll tell you, in my meditation, I, I've really gotten even more basic because I was thinking, if there's only time and energy, then where did energy come from? Then I thought back, and I'm like, maybe, maybe it's not time and energy. Maybe it's time and thought. And that maybe energy now is a manifestation of thought. And that God now is that thought that manifests in accord with the nature of being God. 
So everything that, that is created is created through the God mind. That's a huge thought. Because that can give us a nice context to see ourselves. So, <clears throat> so once we recognize that how we feel is so powerful that it radiates, that we can use how we feel affirmatively to create the world we desire, man, that's a great power. This year is done. We got it made. There are types of enthusiasm. There's animated enthusiasm. Walk through the world like a champion. That, that's called the fake it till you make it enthusiasm. <laughs> you know, we all do it. And the fake it till you make it enthusiasm is often externally motivated. See, two things motivate people, internal stuff and external stuff. As a child, you, you, you operate from external stuff. If you eat your lunch, you get candy. If you don't, you get a whipping. <laughs> that is the first motivation lesson every child learns. And, and, you know, like the first three words a child learns are no, stop, and don't. And then shut up. <laughs> Can we wonder sometimes why our children, if, if they don't get a counter message, <laughs> if they, there's some people that operate completely on that message, no, stop, don't, and shut up. And we can kind of see how that's working, you know. <laughs> then you have genuine enthusiasm, which is the enthusiasm for within. And that enthusiasm comes when you see your vision, the vision of yourself, when you feel that vision of yourself. And so you now see the vision of yourself, you feel it, and you can reduce that vision to goals. And that's the beauty of life. So think about this. There's purpose. That's the reason we are created. The purpose, we, we live and feel our purpose based on the pursuit of our vision. You know, it's like climbing a mountain. Each time you get to the top, you see there's another mountain. And so life is really about constant growth. You never get to a point where I'm done. The moment you get there, that's the end. <laughs> you don't grow anymore. So when we think about this, there's a relationship between animated and, and genuine enthusiasm, and that is this, that if you fake it long enough, you begin to believe it. Muhammad Ali, when he started out, and we always talk about him, I love him because he was a person that I did not believe in. You know, when somebody convinces you and you say, you know what, this stuff works, I watched it. When he said, I am the greatest, all I could think about was the Louisville Lip. Remember that? That's what they call him, the Louisville Lip. All he does is talk about himself. And now the world says he was the greatest. And so that internal, that 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 animated enthusiasm, when you act in a certain way long enough, you develop a habit for it, and therefore that becomes your genuine vibration. Someone once said, we create our habits, but in the end, our habits create us. Amen. <laughs> oh my goodness, there was a, a great quote, and it says, the habits, of, the chains of habits are so gentle that you you never realize you're caught until it's too late. <laughs> that's a terrible paraphrase, but that's what habits do. So when you can get into the habit of acting a certain way, projecting enthusiasm, it eventually becomes automatic. And now the experience you have of the world is based on what you're sending out. So the lesson today is, how do you generate enthusiasm if it's that powerful? Number one, have a great sense of expectancy. I call it to have the great day attitude. That great day attitude is powerful. When you wake up each day and say, this is a great day for living, sharing, and being alive. I'll say that, and then let you all, let's do it together. I'll say it. This is a great day for living, sharing, and being alive together. This is a great day for living, sharing, and being alive. Woo! Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine when you start each day like that? That great sense of expectancy. You know, I've always been in this industry for years and years, and when I'd go to my office, my office was in the Hotel Teresa, 125th and 7th. And I had to, when I walked, good morning, everybody. What's going on? How is everybody doing? One day, I don't remember what was going on in my life, but whatever it was, it was real crazy. And I walked in there, 
down on the elevator, and this is when they had elevator operators, okay, so I really dated myself. Kids go like, yeah, people running out elevators? Yes, they did. They used to have a, every elevator had a person. And so I go up to my office later that day, the guy says, Mr. Harris, you messed me up. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, you always come in like, ah, oh, I'm excited. He said, you came in down this morning. That took me down. <laughs> it was a terrible day. So you never know. That's the power of enthusiasm. What you radiate can transform people. That which you expect and project, you get. That which I expect and project, I get. Let's say that together. That which I expect and project, I get. Number two, realize that you control your thoughts, your emotions, your instincts, and your body. When you realize that, then now you have the power to change your mind about anything that's not good for you. Many times we'll be doing things, stuff that's not good for us, and we know it's not good for us, but for some reason, we keep doing it. To use enthusiasm as your power tool, you have to take control of your body, your mind, and your spirit. I think back often, the great poem Invictus, and the last, the last verse of Invictus, this is from the 1800s, but it says, and when I, you, you, you've heard it, you've heard it, and it says, it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And that's what you are. Each of you is the master of your fate. And so you can take control of your mind. Negative thinking, getting rid of them. You're the farmer, but you're the farm also. Negative people, get rid of them. Especially the negative people, get rid of them. There's a lot of them around. <laughs> negative emotions, get rid of them. Earl Nightingale said, you become what you think about most of the time. I become what I think about most of the time. Let's say that together. I become what I think about most of the time. Number three, to realize that any state of mind is contagious. You see, there's such a thing as negative enthusiasm. <laughs> you know, when we look at the yin-yang concept of the universe, there's always a positive and there's always a negative, and, and little, there's a little of each and each of each one of those. That's why the, the symbol is always like the white with a black dot and the black with a white dot. There's always good and evil and all good things, but you, through your enthusiasm, can affect the world. So to realize that every state of mind is contagious and you project it through your attitude. Your attitude is one of your power tools also because people connect based on your attitude. What you send out, they get it. So your, your state of mind is contagious. The fourth key, and this is one that I get pushback sometimes, is to realize that your personal appearance presents a picture of who you are and what you're about and where you're going. If you don't look a certain, the world responds to you based on what the world sees. So, you know, we see people, we stereotype people, it happens all the time. But when you take control of your appearance, then you determine what you project. And so as you begin to create this year the way you want it to, to be, is your appearance right now congruent with the person you want to be on December 31st? Are you looking and acting and walking the park? Are you dressing the part? So realize that, that your appearance presents a picture of who you are. You have the capacity to change it. And then finally, the thing that really, I think, plugs you in is to maintain a constant level of enthusiasm. You've seen people who are like, excited today, crushed tomorrow. <laughs> they're happy, they're up and down. And that just means that they have not connected their animated enthusiasm with their genuine enthusiasm. They have some issues. The one thing about enthusiasm is to 
make it work for you, you got to have that harmony within you. To conclude, we have the power now to make this year our year for outrageous success. We can use our enthusiasm about that that we desire, once we're clear on that, and use that enthusiasm now to act on it, to connect with it through our consciousness, to create such a strong vibration that it radiates and attracts everything we need. So the people you need to see show up. The calls you've been expecting, they call. I mean, I'm amazed sometimes when it happens. When those things happen, acknowledge them. You know, say, wow, somebody called to buy a ton of product one day. I, years ago, I, I used to sell the water filters. <laughs> you know, nowadays, I don't know, they, these days you wouldn't make a living. But water filters were a big deal, and I had 5,000 of them. <laughs> and it seemed like nobody cared about good water. But I started working at it and working at it, and just when I was about to give up, my phone started ringing. You got some of those water filters? Man, I saw this thing on the TV talking about all this crap in our water. I need to get two of them. I need one for my summer home. Better give me one for the pool, too, because you're swimming in that stuff. So enthusiasm says you hang in there. You create the vibration to make it happen. So today, we'll summarize. Enthusiasm is a way to harness and multiply your thoughts and your emotions. It is an expression of the connection between you and your source. that you can master and generate it by having a great sense of expectancy. I love that program, Expect a Miracle. There's a whole body of knowledge about that, especially in Unity. Expect a Miracle, Course in Miracles. And it's really based on expectations. Realize that you can control your thoughts, your emotions, your body, your instincts. Understand that every state of mind is contagious, so whatever you do, the world gets it and be aware that your personal appearance presents a picture of who you are and what you're about. When you can maintain that constant level of enthusiasm, nothing is impossible. When you can maintain that constant level of enthusiasm, everything you desire for the end of this year will manifest. All you have to do is don't quit, but keep working at it. So let's stand and close out together. I hope this was helpful today. I'll say the affirmation you can repeat after me. I have a great sense of expectancy each day. I have a great sense of expectancy each day. I expect good things. I expect good things. I control my mind, my body, my instincts, and my emotions. <laughs> My state of mind is contagious. My state of mind is contagious. My personal appearance gives a picture of who I am. My personal appearance gives a picture of who I am. <laughs> you just went too far then. <laughs> Friends, you were like, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I maintain a constant level of enthusiasm at all times. I maintain a constant level of enthusiasm at all times. When you can do that, the best is yet to come. Give yourselves a hand. You may be seated. Woo, goodness gracious. I, you all are a great audience. I'm, tell, I'm telling you. I'm a, I, mm, mm, mm. We're going to prepare for the uh, offering, and uh, let's see. We have such so many new things. Ellen, I, you wrote such a beautiful piece. I put it up here now. I can't find it. Let's see. It's here. I have it. I have it. Ellen wrote a new offertory uh, pattern, and I read it last night. It was so beautiful, and last week. 
And let's see, it's uh, somebody took my offertory statement. <laughs> Let spirit just speak. All right, let's see. Let me see if, you know, sometimes you call spirit and you get the answer machine. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Aunt Esther with the old Fred Sanford. I can hear Aunt Esther saying, when you call Jesus, you're going to get, she say, I hope Jesus doesn't have caller ID. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, our offertory statement. It is time for our affirmative giving. Your generous donations are the lifeblood of our spiritual home, enabling us to keep the lights on, support our dedicated staff, and provide nourishing spiritual programs to our beloved community. That is so beautiful. Now more than ever, your heartfelt contributions ensure our continuous presence. So reach deep. <laughs> into your hearts and pockets, knowing that your contributions make a significant impact and enable us to thrive and keep coming back stronger and more united than ever. And so it is. We'll collect our offer. <laughs> a moment. Let us give thanks for this offering given in love, given in support. We give thanks to each and every one of you for searching your hearts and your pockets to share and help, help us build this ministry. We give thanks for your presence, for your vibrations, for your love, and we hope that you will share this vibration, share this message with the world. May we all become one big enthusiasm ball, radiating to the world the goodness we have here. And so it is. Thank you. I can't wait, Bianca. <laughs> Let me move this idea away. I don't want you to be blocked at all. <laughs> be a dancer just start dancing if you want to fly then just take off if you want to let go don't hold on if you want to see the world just get lost you can be the guy with all the money you can be the one who gives it away you can be the keeper of the honey but you might get stung along the way because living your dream is hard work go on and try it you might like it 
living your dream is hard work. Go on and try it. You might like it. Yeah, you might like it. If you want something you never had, do something you never done. You might have to break some rules if you want to have some fun. Call it a dream, call it a plan, I call it the reason that I am. Call it whatever, just call it in. It's never too late to be what you might have been. Living your dream is hard work. Go on and try it, you might like it. You might like it. Oh, living your dream is hard work. Go on and try it, you might like it. Yeah, you might like it. Yeah, you might like it. Yeah, you might like it. Oh, you might like it. Yeah, you might like it. If you want to love, just let it be. If you want a friend, then count on me. If you want to see the world in harmony, just stand up and make your peace. If you're looking for a song, just sing along. If you want to get off, turn it on. Just turn it on, turn it on, turn it on. Oh, because what you want, wants you. What you want, wants you. What you want, wants you. Whoa, what you want, wants you. What you want, wants you. What you want, wants you. Yeah. Yeah. What you want, what you want, what you want, it wants you. And you might like. Yes, we do. Yay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Bianca. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Well, we have come to the end of a, another Sunday service, just about. Wow. What a pleasant time. All right, the announcements are as follows. Lisa Keating will be our prayer partner today. You can meet her over by our prayer box where you can put in requests or acknowledgments. They will be prayed for here for 30 days, and we will send them on to uh, Silent Unity, also to be prayed for. The other thing that's happening this week regarding prayers is Thursday is World Day of Prayer. You have found in your uh, bulletins uh, pieces of paper with lines on them to remember those in your life who you would like to have remembered and prayed about. So if you'll fill them out and put them in the basket in the back, we will collect them and pray for them on Thursday. You can join us. There was a sign-up sheet in the foyer in the uh, kitchen community room, one of those places, uh, to join us to, in praying for those in our lives who are very important to us, either present or having gone by. Today, after the service, is Soup Sunday. It's fall, and we're starting it again, even though it's too hot outside, but it's okay. Join us for some Super Sunday. Your love offerings are acceptable, and please participate in that. The other thing is that our attraction books for 2024 are available. They are outside. They've gone up this year. They cost $30 as opposed to 25 and that's okay. So has our prosperity gone up? Kurtan will be joining us this after the service here at 12.30 for our meditation service. 
Next Sunday after the service, the uh, fall gala committee will be meeting. So if you are involved in that, please stay and participate. The people we that contribute to our well-being every week, we honor our volunteers. This week's the garden team and the building maintenance team. So if you are involved in any of those, can you please stand and uh, let us acknowledge you. Yay. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Next month is some big activities happening here. Actually, this, let me change the paper. On the, uh, our Wednesday meditation program this month will be a week this Wednesday. And that will be Death Has No Strings. It's on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, and it will be, Kurtan will be putting that on for us. So please join us. And then in October, Reverend Ellen Contento, Contente, will be having a class on the principles. So please join us for that. There is a sign up sheet for that, and there is a fee for that. So please join us. It's an ongoing course, and please join us to join that. So now I invite you to join me in our closing prayer. So could you please stand? The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. direct us. May the love of God surround us and fill each and every molecule in our body, bringing joy, bringing healing, and bringing happiness as we make smooth, beautiful, and perfect our way. And so it is.